Hey, you ready to go? Your brain is the engine before you hit the road. Gas up on knowledge, buckle up, let's go. Academic engagement and reaching your goals. Skills for life, it's your license to show. You got the keys, grab the wheel, check your map and your mirrors, optimizing your whole school experience. School Connect. <laughs> Enjoy your ride. Hey, Ty. Hey, buddy. Good to see you. You too. How's it going? Pretty good, actually. Great. I thought you'd enjoy driving. Yeah, for sure. But I have a question. Yeah? So, yeah, I think there may be something wrong with my engine. <laughs> or I need a tune-up or something. Yeah, what's up? So, I've been, uh, you know, thinking about being a sports agent, and I actually think that might be cool, but I gotta get my grades up. So, I've been studying. I mean, I'm really trying, but it's just not working. Ah, huh. so you're studying, but it's not sticking. Yeah, exactly. It's not sticking. Got it. Totally. That's probably our number one customer support question. We get it all the time. I'm glad you came in. Sounds like you want to optimize your brain abilities. Yeah, sounds about right. You've come to the right place. Wow, there is a lot going on in here. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. There's actually a real science and precision behind learning and all your other brain functions. So let's get started. There are five steps to optimizing learning. So we'll start with the reticular activating system. We call it RAS. That's where most learning starts. The RAS is like a filter for all incoming information. We live in such an amazing and complex world that our brains aren't capable of taking in all the sights, sounds, taste, and stimuli in the world around us. We can't see every beam of light or hear every small sound all at once. It'd be too much. So our RAS screens out about 99% of incoming info. Only about 1% gets by the RAS. If we have a lot of noise and distractions coming in, schoolwork gets screened out, which means we have to be purposeful with our 1% of incoming info. Part of studying is setting up the conditions for learning. Huh? The conditions for learning. A couch is great for gaming, but not studying. Yeah, for sure. I see that. <gasps> to optimize your brain's potential, you've got to screen out distractions. Try a desk. I know, old school. But it works. Some place quiet, like your room or dining room table or a library. Don't get me wrong. I like to listen to music too, but try something similar without lyrics. There are all kinds of instrumental options from hip hop to acoustic guitar that give you a beat without words. And hate to say it, but your phone's the biggest distraction. Try putting it on D&D, &D, or even better, D&D &D in another room. After about 30 minutes, you can take a break and check your messages, then get back to work. I know, crazy, but it actually works, seriously. Okay, next, neuroplasticity. As a teen, your brain is way more souped up and ready for next level learning. You are in prime time for neuroplasticity. Neuro what? Neuroplasticity. Neuro, like neurons, and plasticity, for growing and changing. Your teen years are a peak time for brain development and new neural pathways. When you were a kid, you were learning the basics. First, you learned to recognize things in your visual cortex and hear them in your auditory cortex. Cat, cat. And ultimately spell them in your prefrontal cortex. C -A -D, C-A-T, Now that whole area has opened up and is ready to learn. You knew your cat and other cats, 
But now you can have more of a global understanding of cats and cat families, the history of cats, where they come from, anything else that's meaningful to you. Okay, next, neural pathways. The big key to learning is making the most of your neural pathways. Pathways? What do you mean? Yeah, neural pathways are kind of like footprints connecting one memory to another. But they're actually neurons passing the messages. If you walk a place once, your footprints don't last. If you walk the same path over and over again, you start building lasting pathways. And if you start to connect those pathways, they get even more ingrained, and as we call it, sticky, meaning memorable and lasting. That's how neural pathways work, like footprints, but with neurons. And now, step five, multisensory learning. The key to learning is to build neural pathways throughout your brain. The auditory cortex, the visual cortex, the motor cortex, and the prefrontal cortex. Even the amygdala is involved in processing the emotions related to learning. Actually, almost all new memories go through the amygdala first. If it evokes emotion, Amy's involved. Huh? So give me an example. What's a test you have to study for? Um, biology. So let's say you're studying for your biology test. If you skim pages the night before, highlight, and then check it again right before the test, it's not going to stick. Now, same test prep, but with more neural pathways. So you get ready to study. What's that? You read and take notes, draw a diagram, quiz yourself with the notes, study with a friend, quiz yourself again and again, then take your test and then correct anything you missed. Now it sticks. When you just read and highlight, your brain's barely lighting up. But when you take and draw notes, you're using visual and kinesthetic learning by being physically active. When you study with a friend, you're using visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and even having a positive experience which gets coded with emotions in the amygdala. When you self-quiz, you're retracing those pathways to make them more sticky. Then when you correct yourself and learn from experience, it's gone from learning to applying. That's where some of the best, most memorable learning happens when you start using the information in real life. Not just memorizing it, but using it. Jeez, that sounds like a lot of work and time. I have a lot going on right now. I don't have time for all this neuroscience brain stuff. I just need a quick fix. I hear you. This does seem like a lot of maintenance. But the trick is not studying harder, but studying smarter. You can get more done in 40 minutes when you do it right than in four hours when you're not really doing it. Hmm. Uh, okay, that's a lot. A lot of work. I think I'm good. So, you think you'll use any of this? Um, yeah, sure. Maybe. Definitely. Probably not. Okay, one more time. In case it comes in handy. What's RAS stand for? Um, reticular activating something. Right, reticular activating system. And what's it do? Okay, so it filters out info. It can only take so much at a time, so it screens out whatever is too much. Right. And what helps optimize it? What helps optimize it is less distractions, so it's easier to study. Right. And what builds neural pathways? Using lots of parts of your brain. Seeing things, writing things, talking about it, um, self-quizzing, test corrections, you know, all that stuff. Okay, nice. And what doesn't work? Um, um what I'm doing? I get it. Optimization takes a while to get used to. You can stick with the original factory settings and just keep running as is. Many people do. But that would kind of be like wanting to be an awesome soccer player without ever practicing or running drills. You know? It's basically the same thing. Drills and skill building. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe. I do see the potential. 
Thanks. I gotta go. Yeah. Next time we'll talk fuel. Fuel? Yeah, you'll need fuel to optimize. Come back Saturday, and I'll introduce you to the neuros. D, Sarah, and Addie. You already know D for dopamine. We'll meet his sisters, Sarah and Addie, for serotonin and adrenaline. Okay. Thanks for your help. I'll see you Saturday. Yeah, 10 a.m. See you soon. All the best on your soccer game tonight. I am so sorry I'm late. Dog, where have you been? Uh, I don't even know. Getting a tune-up? But the, but trick, the trick is not is studying, studying harder, harder, but studying, but studying smarter. smarter. You can, you get, can more get more done. done. See you soon. Mm -hmm.